exercise we're going to start off nice and simple two planetary nebula and a globular cluster M57 otherwise known as the ring nebula M27 the dumbbell nebula and M56 a globular cluster okay let's get to it so before we start with the atlas I thought I'd just take a moment to orient you in the night sky so if you go outside uh, during the summer months and I've set the date here um, towards the end of August and face south um, and look up hopefully on a clear night you'll get some sort of view like this in the northern hemisphere I'm at about uh, 52 degrees latitude and I've set the p light pollution level so that uh, the Milky Way is just visible uh, which is pretty average I think for, for most people so if we were to look up um, we will eventually come to see these three stars Altair, Deneb and Vega. Now if I put the constellation lines on you'll see that Vega is actually in the constellation of Lyra, Deneb in the constellation of Cygnus and Altair is in Aquila the Eagle. Um, I always think that Altair is perhaps one of the easy ones to find because it's uh, flanked by these two relatively bright stars as well and you might even see this little asterism here which is Delphinus. Okay so that's that's the summer triangle those three bright stars uh, and we're going to use those as the reference point for kicking off for our star hopping. So the first target on our list is M57 uh, that's the ring nebula and it's in the relatively small constellation of Lyra the Harp. So it's this asterism you can see here, a uh, parallelogram coming away from there. There are some other stars, of course, in the constellation, but these are the bright ones that we're interested in. And we're going to start with the brightest, Vega. So you remember the summer triangle has just shown. There's Deneb up there. Come across to Vega, and you can, if you, as long as you're not in really light polluted skies, you'll be able to see the, uh, um, the parallelogram alongside it. So Vega is our starting point, um, and if we were to actually measure it, what you can see is from one end to the other, it's only around seven degrees. So it's not very big at all, really. You know, three fingers in width at arm's length is going to cover the whole thing. Um, so that's the kind of size you're looking for if you're still struggling to find it. Put our finder scope over the top of Vega first of all. And uh, before we go too far, I want to show you something first of all, and that's this star up here, um, Epsilon. Epsilon, Epsilon Lyra is actually also known as the Double Double. So uh, if you look at it through the finder scope, um, you'll be able to see two stars. If you were to center on it and then look at it through a telescope, anything more than about four inches in diameter, you should be able to resolve at least one of those two stars into two more. In fact, both of them are, are double stars. It's called the double double. It's a good challenge uh, for for a small telescope, and well worth a look. Okay, so coming back with center on Vega, and uh, you can see we need to move down through the par parallelogram uh, down to the bottom. M57, this little green circle with a cross in it, is the planetary nebula, and uh, yeah, we need to know which way to move, that's the thing. Now the finder scope of course is showing you usually, unless you've got a corrected finder scope, is showing you an inverted view. So what I suggest you do is to look through the finder scope and then practice moving the telescope a little bit. Find out which way it's going to move um, to move down towards that. Um, maybe you want to just, just jiggle it by hand. Once you've got that then what we need to do is to move down to the next star in the uh, in the chain and that's called Zeta and uh, you'll see Vega still stays within the field of view and we've got Zeta and indeed the one across here which is uh, what is it um, yeah Delta 
Yeah, so let's line up like that so that we've got zeta in the middle. We can still see the double double as well, so we've got this this uh, four or five stars, and that's what we'll see in the finder scope. Then if we move down so that zeta is at the corner of the finder scope, the opposite side of it just come into view should be beta lyra. Um, so let's move that down a little bit further and also this one now gets to the corner. Keep going a bit further and you should start to see the other stars coming in. So the other one over here which is uh, uh, gamma and oh, what's that? Upsilon I think um, Lyra. So basically you just want to put those two stars in the middle and you should, given some reasonably dark skies, then be able to already see M57. Uh, it's pretty small. In fact it's one of the smaller targets So it needs a fair amount of magnification to get a, uh, a good image on it. And when you look at it through the telescope, anything smaller than a 6 inch telescope will struggle to show you much colour on it, unfortunately. So even though it's one of the easiest um, deep sky objects to find because of its relative location to a bright star and a small asterism, unfortunately um, it's not particularly rewarding. However, it does look very much like a small smoke ring. So, yeah, if you can see that small smoke ring, well done. You've just star hopped to your first deep sky object. Okay, whilst we're in the region of this, we could also look at another one as well, um, and that's the globular cluster M56. So as you can see it's not very far away from uh, from Lyra and in fact if I just use my my tool you'll see it's about five degrees which is three fingers uh, away from uh, this bottom left hand star. So how do we find it? Well if we start back with M57 in, in the uh, finder scope once we finish looking at that, we can move across so that uh, that one is in the finder scope. Uh, and then, uh, basically, we once again, we need to know which way we're moving. And in this case, we're going, we've got Deneb up here, Sada coming down through um, New and comes down to Beta Cygnus, which is also known as Albiro. We'll have a look at that one as well in a minute. Um, and basically, it's a line between the two. So if you can find that one, two, three, fourth relatively bright star in Cygnus, that's Albiro, and start with that one and you'll see it's a straight line and in fact the distance between those two is about 8 degrees. Okay, so if we put uh, Gamma um, Lyra, which is also known as Sulafat, into the finer scope in the centre, and then once again work out which direction we've got to move the finder scope and the telescope to get towards our biro. Um, so when you're looking through the finder scope one little tip is keep the other eye open and then you can see you can actually focus on both you can see which way you're, you're moving. And once again if we move to the side of so that uh, gamma is at the side of the finder scope then just come into view on the other side it'll be M56 once again get to there you've got all of those in view so this little sort of uh, arcing line between the two you'll see that as a, uh, a line of stars and then you should see a little fuzzy patch M56 that's a globular cluster here's some details about it Great, well done. 